way, okay, and say, y'all better come my way, I'ma make a statement day by day. Peace out, peace out, up, put them in the air, bingo, rise up. Welcome to Jam Packed. I am your host, Jamila, and I'm super geeked and pumped. I have a very special treat for y'all. She is the founding president of the L Project Los Angeles. Uh, and for y'all that are like, oh, that sounds familiar. The L Project LA is a historically lesbian nonprofit 501c3 organization founded in 2015, um, working to promote, support, and inspire LGBTQI and Black, Indigenous, people of color, artists through educational opportunities, music, art, and technology. Their mission is to promote and support emerging artists in the community, and including non-binary creatives through the arts and technology, like I said, and producing, um, they, they've produced multicultural LGBTQI events like Frida Fest and the Women's Freedom Festival to showcase the beautiful array of talent within our community. Y'all, you don't want to miss their event that they have coming up. The L Project presents Women's Freedom Festival, a virtual pride event, Y'all, we didn't get Pride last year, so we need to turn up, even if it's virtually. The Women's Freedom Festival is going down June 19th of this year, 2021. This Pride celebration is going to feature art, music, poetry, fashion, guest speakers, and much more. Early bird tickets are officially on sale. So there's general admission tickets to the Freedom uh, Women's Freedom Festival. Um, the early bird tickets are available until May 19th. And then they go on to uh, the general admission tickets, uh, regular price, uh, until May tw- uh, from May 20th to June 18th. Um, and then the day of event, uh, they will also have tickets available. So uh, make sure you check it out. All of that will be in the show notes And y'all, one of our favorites, our confirmed, more to say, is one of the confirmed performances. We love more to say on Jam Pack. Make sure you check out their episode on Jam Pack called More to Say About uh, to to talk about their journey and to learn about uh, all of the beautifulness. Um, And, you know, support even if you can't make it to the virtual pride event. I know we all have busy lives and we're probably virtually tapped out, but y'all, this is a celebration. It is our month. Listen, it's our month. It's our day. It's our day every day. So support the cause however you are able to, even if you can't make it. Um, Your tax deductible donation will move their mission forward and allows them to provide resources and programming to those they can serve to um and so you may have seen them like last year you may have seen on their coverage of abc7 during the all black lives matter march um in celebration of what would have been the 50th la pride uh parade uh a virtual a virtual event on abc make sure you uh look in the uh, google schmoogle for that one um Y'all, she is the inventor of the Skulls Double End Bag, a patented Skulls Double End Bag, provides a realistic striking target that improves eye-hand coordination, speed, distance, and timing skills. This bag is not only unique and functional, but it's also fun to hit. Y'all, you know I love boxing, so that's already amazing. Um, So, and she is also the owner of the mobile training service, Fight Goddess Fitness. She specializes in combat sports, sports conditioning, and performance coaching. She is a master trainer, nationally certified personal trainer, a wilderness survival, first aid certified responder. Y'all, she got a lot on her mind, so much so that she is the host of the Angry Afro Radio, bringing you unfiltered commentary on art, film, literature, politics, and social justice. She also hosts a weekly show on YouTube and Clubhouse for y'all Clubhouse folks. I know a lot of y'all I've met on Clubhouse called The War Room. So make sure you check it out. It is with Eddie Goldman, a award-winning uh, journalist in the game of boxing, uh, discussing the fight game, politics, and social du- justice topics. 
y'all, they get into the conversation, okay, over there. Um, and she also manages unsigned fighters. Uh, she's been in the industry for over 30 years in the fight game uh, for about 12 years or so and spent the first two years in boxing, spending that time at Freddie Roach's boxing gym, wild card. I had to come with my uh, City of Angels hoodie. Hey, I've I had been to, there. I, I had, had some to... boxing photos from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love fun. that place. That's my that's my home right there, y'all. She is a Navy veteran. She is the fight goddess by day, and DJ Tribal by night. <laughs> DJ Tribal mixing smooth jazz, R and B, house salsa, and more. Check out her mixes and download them on Mixcloud. Joining us from L.A., folks, I bring to y'all Chris Baldwin. Right on. Where's my applause track? Yeah. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Thank woo. you. Thank you. I'm wow. Happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Where you I'm are here. out here. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the Jamila Jam Packed House, baby. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> angry afros has got that's that's a look. I, the pandemic, I had an angry afro. I shaved it off, uh, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was angry over for a year or so. For actually for yeah. four years, I had Trump's ass up in there. Every day, I wake up mad. Oh my goodness! Listen, if y'all don't believe it, the proof, the receipts are there. Like just strolling down all of what Angry Afro Radio has done already. Like you, I love that you are so strongly passionate and committed and just, you you have a lot on your mind and we were talking about podcasting and just, I, I, I think you fit for the podcast world. I'm just going to put that out there. Listen, they got angry bloggers out here. You got an angry Afro you know, you you the equivalent of uh, writing a strongly worded letter yeah, <laughs> out there. Yeah, you I'm, just, the, I'm that person. If you want somebody to be cursed out, that I'm the one you go call. <laughs> listen, and nobody is off limits. I'm just going to put it out there Not like that. Not even my mama. Not even her mama. <laughs> and I can't wait to get into that. Okay. Mama, MAGA mama. That's, MAGA that's mama, what the that's lead right. is going to be. That's what the teaser is. Into that conversation is going to be because there is nobody off limits. There's no chill. And so when you, if you want no chill, you go go to Angry Afro and get you a dose of all of that knowledge and just gems that you just drop in. But I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so before I get carried away, um, as I normally do, so your drink of choice was technically Jack Daniels. <laughs> and then I said, so, hey, do you have your Jack Daniels? And Chris responded with, I've got some Stella. <laughs> I got a little dark Stella. That's a my yes. brown drink of choice today. Hey. But hey, I backed it up. I'm chasing it with a little tequila. Okay. Nice. Nice. So I figured I had to do us some good. I got my Bushmills out. Now, this is not the this is not the real Bushmills that will punch you in the chest because that could be a very drunken episode, but I got the Irish honey. Um I, I apparently pay, paying homage at the same time to uh to a little bit of Chris's ancestry. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Um, and it turns out that today, the day that we are recording, it is National Whiskey Day. So, All right, we'll toast up. Here we, we will go. toast. We will toast to that. Cheers. Cheers. This uh, Irish honey whiskey is for you. <laughs> right on this Stella Ooh. Midnight Lager. That's what we're talking about. Ooh, midnight yeah. Lager. Yeah. Have you tried the Bushmills Irish honey? Because I've just remembered how strong it still kind of is. Well, you know, I don't really <laughs> drink anything sweet. I don't really like, unless it's yeah. a margarita and, you know, it's got yeah. some extra stuff on it. But that's about the sweetest drink I drink. Usually I drink my bourbon on the rocks, no chaser. Yeah. When I was younger, I always mix, mix Jack Daniels with the, uh, with the Coca-Cola. But I stopped doing that. So it's just, give me the damn drink. Straight. Yeah. That's the young days. Like, oh, let me days. let me just let me mix it with some coke right. and be cute about it, you know. 
Maybe I if it's like a cute, stressful day, maybe a little right. Coke and Hennessy, but that's probably the... <laughs> Why are you ruining Hennessy with Coca-Cola? <laughs> Listen, I have had a long journey uh, with Hennessy filled with ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> I I I got I'm gonna tell you this one little brief moment in time. If people are listening, you're brand new to the show, and you really want some drunken shenanigans. I was drunk. Um, it was an episode with Amber's Closet, and Hennessy got the best of me and our long uh uh love story. <laughs> journey of ups and downs began (laughs) in that very moment but yeah that was and i had the hennessy on the rocks no no mixture just did you you eat the eat before you drank the hennessy you have to eat i did i did i did but at the time i also you know i try to be responsible like order food make sure everybody has food because we're gonna drink you know i try to be responsible but i've realized As I do these, I can only eat so many hours before an episode. I don't like eating within an hour or so of recording. So that becomes a little bit of a tricky space. Right. I get you. I I don't want to be like, you know, all gassy and (laughs) just full and just feeling all sluggish. Yeah, feeling all sluggish. I I think I hit the mute button, but I haven't. You hear me just (laughs) pass gas for the, this is a new level of intimacy that I've got with y'all. Like, you broke that barrier. (laughs) Listen, I will expose myself in its drunken nature, but a fart, I'm going to keep that for the wife. (laughs) They love our farts. Yeah, yeah, it depends. Depends. It depends. It depends who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So we have a little bit of order of business out of the way. We got your drink right. out of the way. Okay. Um, so we are going to play What Do You Mean? Okay. What do you mean? What do you mean? And so we are going to take our best guess at giving a caption, a meme that hopefully makes one another chuckle. Now, if one of us laughs, if I laugh at my own one, which happens too often, um, I will have to take a drink on myself. So if one of us laughs, we got a drink. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think your shit is so hilarious and fire. All right. I'm going to be stoic this whole time. Yes. Yes. Nothing. Yes. Angry Afros. This is about to get really interesting. (laughs) And I kind of suck at these games because, you know, I need a minute to process. I'm a little stoner. So, you know, take me a minute. What is that? (laughs) All right. No, yeah, I'll give you a moment for sure. For sure. So I'll let you take the first guess. We'll both guess on the same. Well, not guess, but we'll both give our submissions uh, for the image that I will share. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right. You ready? Good. Let's go. Let's go. Getting into character. <laughs> All right. So the first one we have is an old white man. Oh, Chris love the white people. Listen. Uh, Hell so- no, I'm not picking your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an older white male with a scarf and possibly an ugly Christmas sweater with his thumbs up, looking like he's he kind of. Like he's, well, I I thought he looked like he's trying to hitchhike, but you know, yeah. he's got a white background on there. He does look like he's he's trying to hitchhike. Let me show this camera. There we go. So I will let you go first. Um, ooh, I you know like a bunch of different ones came at the same time. So I'm gonna. Um, you have well, what my, you my, just my one first come- re- my first response is what I'm gonna go with. Is, okay, that's hell no. I'm not picking your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad I laughed. You laughed. Oh, Drink up. Mm. 
You know, the really terrible part is if I have a conversation with someone, I'm laughing, I'm laughing, and then they say something, it was supposed to be funny, and I really didn't think it was funny. I just... No, no nervous. Be, you got to stay straight. No, no. But I, I love to laugh. And that's, and I'm just like, damn, that must have been really, like, shitty, because it just was not right. that funny. If I'm not laughing, you know well, what's your bad. meme for this? What's your meme for this? Ooh, um... Uh, <laughs> I had another one. P- pull my thumb. I, I got a surprise. Smell, or, 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 I was thinking <laughs> yeah. smell my thumb. You're right. And pull, uh, pull my thumb. I got a surprise. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I laughed at myself. Chris didn't think it was funny. So I'm going to drink. Uh, I wanted to talk about like farting and the boo-boo in his pants and I was just like ah how am I gonna frame this and then it just didn't it didn't happen oh oh this is a good one right here this is a perfect (laughs) meme this is I love this frog character like I've always looked for this character with the hands like what did I do um so this is the classic frog uh, stenciled frog with okay. big ass toes. I just noticed he's got big ass toes. Um, crying, putting a fork, looking to put a fork into a uh, socket. Um, so I guess my, <laughs> I guess I'm it's gonna my, let you go first. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um. Okay. Damn it, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Goodbye, cruel world. I must go now. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> ah! Okay, I. Yeah. Okay, Straight go up. ahead. Hey, 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 I saw the cross on the. It looked like I, a cross on the on the shirt. I, well, I was about. To, I was just gonna say. Uh, I wonder what happens if I stick this in here. That was, yeah. See, look, you laughed. Fucking, I, because I was just going to go I, with. I'm sorry for you. Let's toast it. <laughs> Listen, you know, it's bad. You know, the joke was bad. The guest feels bad for you. <laughs> I'm going to drink again because that was just. All right. Your turn. All right. Let's go. Let's see. What is this? This is a headstone that says, It was Bill. lit, fam. <laughs> well, that's what you say when you leave one of my parties. Hey! It was lit, fam. <laughs> we'll drink to uh, that. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to drink. Uh, okay. Mine is going to be... But did you die, though? I was like even waiting for it to settle, to sit, marinate. Oh, but did you die though? Oh, okay. I'm going to drink. I'm going to drink. Drink up. Oh my. (laughs) Ah. Okay. We've got basically an old, we got the elderly squad. Um uh with their hands up uh standing together in unison. Uh I guess it would be my turn. It's your turn. Um nobody fucks with the golden girls. <laughs> okay, that's good. I was gonna use the golden girls. Yes! What's that? I was gonna use the golden girls. Oh, use say, it, use it, use it. I'm, look, I'm sorry. Ma, no I was depends. really. I apologize. No, look, my no depends. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Listen, if y'all are listening, just hit the pause button. Go to YouTube. You go want to see uh, Chris uh, <laughs> uh, imitating the Golden Girls uh, with their hands up. <laughs> 
That was fantastic. I like that. I'm going to take a drink. I, I need to right. actually take fill a drink, up. Take a drink. Yes. Woo. You know, you really do forget. Even Bushmill still packs a mean punch, even if it's Irish. A little bit of Irish honey to your life. That's right. Oof. <sighs> Drink up. Mm, mm, mm. Add some more ice to that. Ooh, yeah, I know. You see, my bushmill just assaulted the ice cube. <laughs> oh man, you know, I, I, I want folks to kind of get a better understanding of who Chris Baldwin is. You know, like for folks that don't have that haven't tuned in yet. Um, that haven't done the deep dive, um, kind of, I I'm curious of your coming out journey, um, starting from kind of the earlier baby gay days, um, your mom had given you up for adoption. And after 54 years, you found your birth mother. And then three years later, you severed uh, ties. Mm -hmm. How did your relationship or lack of a rela relationship with your mom impact your coming out journey and life in general? Um, well, that's a great question. I, um, <clears throat> I had my first girlfriend when I was 18. And I think I kissed my first girl when I was about five. So my adoptive mom, when she found out, she kind of sensed that I was a lesbian. She asked me, as a matter of fact, when I was like in seventh grade, I think she asked me if I was a lesbian, but I didn't know what the term meant. You know, yeah. I was like, no, yeah. what are you talking about? Oh, just yeah. play it along. But in the meantime, I dressed like a boy. I've been dressing like a boy since I was a kid. Um, I had three paper routes. All the women on the route thought I was a boy. I got mistaken for a boy all the time. And uh, I had a little play girlfriend <laughs> you know, okay. in high school. But I went to the military because my mother was such a, in my mind, you know, I call her a tyrant, but she was just one of those strong black women that did not take any shit. And she ruled our house with an iron fist. Uh, well, I should say a leather belt. And uh, right, black she, yeah, yeah, black she, mom, <laughs> right? She beat our asses for days. Shit. But um, I just knew that if I was going to get out from under her thumb, I had to leave Cleveland, Ohio, right? Because I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. So I joined the military before I even got out of uh, uh, before I even graduated high school. I joined the military. My parents had to sign for me to get in. And then um, I remember, you know, I had never, I didn't date guys really. I had like a play boyfriend when I was just in, you know, in high school, I played sports. So I never really had a boyfriend. Yeah. Um, I had a play boyfriend during the summer before I went to uh, the Navy, but I really never had a boyfriend. And when I got to Spain, there was a guy that liked me and I was like, okay, we could be, but we never had sex. Never. We just, you know, I was, I grew up in the church. So I was, yeah. tr wasn't trying to have sex with your ass. And I was very <laughs> modest and, you know, I had very conservative yeah. ways, but still yeah. I like girls, but I didn't know it was a big thing. So my best friend and I in Spain, um, she was digging on me and I really wasn't understanding that. And I remember when my mother passed away, who um, she died when I was in Spain, I had to come home on leave. Um, I was talking to my cousin, Cookie, and I was telling her that this, this woman, you know, was, she was like my best friend and I loved her, but I wasn't, I didn't understand that concept of being in love. And she was like, oh, you know, it's like, she was, she was the only one in my family that was like, oh, it's a, it's okay. And you know, blah, blah, blah. And then when I got back to Spain, you know, the woman had come on to me and we kind of made out, we became girlfriends at 18. So we had, and, but we're in the military. So you can't really have a girlfriend. You can't be out. It was all hush, hush. Um, and we were together for about, I want to say about a year before she went out and cheated on me and had a baby, got pregnant and followed my ass from Spain to Puerto Rico. She brought herself and that baby to Puerto what? Rico. What? Yes. And I'm the, this is how I learned though, 
that once you break up with somebody, there's no going back because you just carry, especially when you're young, you're going to carry all that baggage that you had in that first relationship into the second relationship. And so I tried to do the right thing. You know, I let her, she just showed up in, in Puerto Rico, first of all, got off the plane and said, called me and said, I'm here. And I had to, you know, I just stepped up. I took care of her and the baby, brought her on and introduced her to all my friends. Next thing you know, she fucking another dude on the base. I was like, oh, hell no, bitch, you gotta go. I fucking, (laughs) that was, okay, I think that was, uh, by that time, that was in Puerto Rico. So I was like 20, maybe 20, 21 years old. And yeah, we got into a fight. We got into a big old, that was my first time I like beat somebody's ass. I beat her ass and sent her home. I got put her on a plane back to Chicago and sent her home. I was like, you're not going to make no fool out of me. I'm here taking care of your baby and you out fucking some dude. You tripping. That's hella trifling. What the hell? Hella trifling. Hella trifling. But it was my, that's my lesson. That's my journey. So around... Uh, in, in Puerto Rico, I'm telling you, Puerto Rico is like one of the most, it was in the 80s, okay? So you got to think party central. Like all my friends were gay. We were, we had a gay squad. And in Puerto Rico, you can go out and stay party all night long. And that's exactly what we did because it was the 80s. You had cocaine, you had weed, you had everything. <laughs> And you can literally, we, me and my buddies used to go into this bar that was called Sinatra's. And mm-hmm. all they had in this bar was, all you could get was a fresh hamburger and French fries. And do you know, that was it. That's all you could get. And people would eat their burgers and snort their cocaine on the bar. And all Damn. the only thing playing in the jukebox was Frank Sinatra records. And we used to <laughs> we used to go in there, party all night and come back to the base. And our CEO was pissed because my friends were loudly, fabulously gay. Like my friend Kalani wore makeup he wore a lava lava because he was from hawaii and he liked you know he was fucking all the marines on base but yeah so eventually how was that it was amazing (laughs) (laughs) i mean it sounds amazing but like it was the it was just it was like i think back on my life and i just go it's like a it's like something out of a storybook that's a fucking movie that is an epic movie movie. it's just it's just it's just the craziest shit so uh but actually actually before i my friend before my first girlfriend after we broke up in Spain, she left. She got booted out of the Navy. This other woman hit on me. She was older. She was like a 34-year-old woman in the Air Force. And she had had her eye on me for a really long time. And this was in Spain. And she she tried to like, like just turn me out. And I was like, okay, well, let's go. <laughs> and I had never been with no older woman, you know, it was just me and my friends. We like, all right, let's get, we think we doing something. But I got with her and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> this is what it's about. Oh yeah, we good. Let's go. <laughs> and so, so then by the time I got to Puerto Rico, then I'm full on, you know, I'm like turning girls out, trying to meet up with all the straight me and my buddy. He was uh, Dave. He was straight. He and I used to go down to the clubs and cause the, in the clubs they had in Puerto Rico, they had a gay section. They had a gay beach. And so you could go to the gay bar. You could get two drinks for the price of one during happy hour. And so we would go down there and turn all the straight girls, like get them drunk and then take them back to our place. And we would do our thing. (laughs) I know that's terrible. (laughs) It's terrible now when you think about it, but that was pretty much it. I mean, and then I got booted out from, they kicked me out of Puerto Rico because they they didn't like that shit. (laughs) They was like, oh no, bitch, you gotta go. So what? My, my captain, he made me leave. He packed, he made me pack my shit. And I, they sent me where? To Hawaii. <laughs> Damn. The next best place, the if best not thing. the best place to right, go. <laughs> but eventually there, because I am going, you know, I am tr- like really now deep in my sexuality. Now I'm understanding that I'm a lesbian. I tried to do the straight thing for two weeks and that didn't work. Because my best friend and and I, he was like, oh, come on, let me just turn you up. No, no. And you got a big old, like, he, big ass dick. I was like, no, (laughs) Negro. (laughs) This is virgin punani down here. (laughs) 
You shit. are officially a gold star. No, no, no. I w- I've let him talk me into that shit. And after that <laughs> one fucking time, that was all I needed. I was like, no, that's it. I'm cool on you guys. That's some bullshit. I need to be on top. I need to be on top. All right. Yeah, be on top, and that was it. <laughs> right. right. There is so, something missing from this piece, right? right? I was like, this, this, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was not feeling that at all. So yeah, for two weeks, I was about I was straight for like two weeks because wow, damn, it, it's a trip. You got you. You had your gold star revoked and then reinstated at the, at the quickly. Of, <laughs> at the age of twenty four, I had my gold star re, uh, my cherry popped. <laughs> You know, but that's only because you have this society's pressure to try to make you straight. You know, it's like there was a guy on my base in Puerto Rico who um, he came over from the army base to play basketball with our I played all star volleyball. So I was in the gym all the time. And if I got in trouble, they would send me to the gym and I used to get in trouble a lot. (laughs) So, you know, I wound up. This dude tried to convince me. Actually, he did actually convince me because, you know, he told me I was going to hell. And I believe that shit back then. What? I believed it, you know, because I grew up in the church, right? When you grew up in the church, you went to parochial school, you're fucking colonized. You you don't, you're fucked up. Mentally, you are fucked up. So yeah. I let him convince me that I needed Jesus. And then as soon as I let that motherfucker baptize me, do you know he hit on me and he was married? Like no. As, as soon as he baptized me, he did that double no. dumpy shit in there. I let him do that. <laughs> the very next day, oh, shit. He, he hit on me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going back to smoking my cigarettes and fucking <laughs> drinking my shit and hitting right. on my way. That was immediately because I'm like, you are a fucking hypocrite. And that was my first problem with the church in the beginning. It's like, you guys cannot answer my questions. This is why I'm an yeah. atheist today. I'm agnostic. Wow. I'm, I'm not an atheist. I'm going to take that back. I'm spiritual. <laughs> I know that as humans, we are here living the human experience and that our souls are eternal. There's no, because you cannot destroy or create energy. It just transforms into something else. And so when yeah. we leave here, we return to the universe. I believe that. But do I believe that bullshit in the Bible? If any of y'all offended by that, I'm sorry. Because I don't believe it. I didn't believe it when I was seven and eight. And I don't fucking believe it at 59. Okay? So y'all want to tell me Adam and Eve had two babies, had two sons. You going to tell me Eve fucked her sons? How did, how did you populate a whole planet with a woman and three men? I, I think folks listening have not necessarily that they're agnostic or atheist or religious or, you know, spiritual. I think anybody listening to this podcast or watching this podcast right now, I think has an understanding of the hypocrisy in religion. And I've spoken about it plenty of times on the show, my experience in religion and coming out and this and that and religion being held against myself and my wife and all of that crazy stuff like that. that It's just there's so much hypocrisy in religion. Um, And we actually had a LGBT uh, Q pastor and their partner come on the show and talk about all of that as well. So I, I love the different points of view. So don't ever feel like you have to apologize or, right. you know, like it, it, that's how you feel. And this is a, a place to share exactly how you feel. People can disagree. People can agree And you can agree to disagree or agree to agree. Like, I I think that's just, that's just life. You're going to meet people that you don't agree with and that you disagree with. Um, And so I, 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 yeah. And so I just wanted to put that little footnote in there of, because I've had my personal journeys with, within Mm -hmm. the world of religion and hypocrisy on different playing fields of I work in affordable housing and there was a pastor minister. I don't know what the fuck he calls himself, but he was trying to be somebody's bishop, 
But meanwhile, he was volunteering at our property in a different state, like doing some real crazy wild shit, like with some of the girls when they were just trying to Mm. be there to earn a paycheck and like really fuck with their mind, like manipulating them, saying like, oh, well, you know, I'm the one that like technically holds the power. I'm the one that can pick who's going to be here. No, motherfucker, you not. Right. Because as soon as I got wind of that shit, I called whoever the fuck his bishop, fucking head wrangler, Uh bishop, pastor wrangler is, and let them know. That's not okay. You're not going to corner a woman in a room and think that that's remotely okay. Fuck who I am personally and how you feel, how you, how you feel like you've internalized your religion in how you see me, but being a pastor and saying that you're this person that people like are supposed to like, quote unquote, look up to and aspire to be and like, Oh, be so fucking godly and this and that, like, but you doing some real, real like creeper fucked up manipulative like abusive shit you know and i got wind of that i was like that is not okay so i feel like i i get you i get what you're saying and i feel like i don't want it to be lost in your passion but i love your passion in how you feel um but I want folks to understand that are listening and watching that there's different levels of that shit going on in the church mm-hmm. and in religion. Um, so I just wanted to join you as we Thank you. completely Thank go you. off a, uh, <laughs> right. a deep end of religion and how we felt in our journey. Right, of- you, you know, you have to come to terms with that, especially when you're trying to, Uh, work through, you know, your sexual nature and trying to figure things out. And so um, part of that is letting go. And it's, it's a, it is a journey because we have to decolonize ourselves, right? You're indoctrinated time. You were born until the time you were seven years old, you are downloading information because you're brand new human beings and our, and our brains are just sucking everything in. Right. And if, if part of what you sucked in and downloaded is trauma or religion, to me, religion is traumatic. Like it, it yeah. really fucked with your head. Like if I'm having, it really is. It really, really is. Going to hell and burning in some mystical lake. You know, y'all traumatize me. I want to sue these motherfuckers right now. But <laughs> I, I work through that. And so it is our journey to kind of unravel all the stuff that was indoctrinated into us and between those ages, you know, and even past the age of seven, but it's locked in between those ages. Like after seven, it's kind of locked, locked in there. So, um, you know, I applaud anybody that wants to look beyond uh, religion and your, your, your pastor and your Bible, because there, there's something uh, deeper the connections that we have with humans, and it has nothing to do with the religion. It's you, we're talking universal principles. Yeah. Universal principles of love your neighbor, treat Mm -hmm. each other as you want to be treated. It is really that simple. To shift a little bit. uh, I I feel like we could talk about this probably all day long, but I want to make sure that we touch on the main event that's right. Let's talk about Women's Freedom Festival. Women's Freedom Festival. But before we get to Women's Freedom Festival, you know, you are the founding president of the L Project LA. Right. What was the moment um, that helped the founder create uh, the L Project LA? You have been there from the ground up. Kind of give us a bit of a little bit of what we were discussing earlier. You were giving me a background, a for a detail, a more detailed background of um, the history of the L project, but kind of what was that moment that sparked the L project LA? I think at the time there was a, a concerted effort by some of the lesbians in West Hollywood to uh, they were trying to push the city to open 
a, a women's center, essentially. And they were restoring a building called the, the Mazer Archives. <clears throat> and it's called, actually the building is called the Whirly Building. It's a historical building, but now the Mazer Archives, they've moved into that building. And we were hoping that the L project could have shared some of that space, but that didn't work out. <clears throat> so the Mazer Archives is in, and they actually needed all that space because they, they have the historical records from a lot of uh, women and movements from all over uh, California. So, um, so when that didn't happen, Elizabeth decided, you know, let me just do you know, let me just form our form my own organization. And she and uh, we had met with a friend of mine had and I had met with Elizabeth and the original board, uh, a couple other people that they wanted uh, to kind of get this movement going, this organization going. Um, and then they kind of broke up. And so when Elizabeth decided to do her own thing, that's when she she you know tagged me and said, "Hey, I'd love to have you on board as a founding president." And once that happened, you know, I started recruiting board members and um, our first event was Freedom Fest. I, I came up, I've been doing uh, events for a long time. I, I'm, you know, in the military, we didn't have much to do. So my buddy, my gay buddy and I, uh, Kalani, we used to throw fashion shows and parties and all kinds of oh, stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so I, I did the art and music show and I used to do them up in Oakland. I just when I had a company up in Oakland called Tribal Spirit. And uh, we did a hot chocolate erotica show, which was a oh, chain. Shit. I rented out, you okay. know, we rented out Black Box Theater. We had um, Guapale perform. We had a uh, few, you know, we always had performers and erotic dancers. It was it was off the chain. So, nice. so now, you know, at, with the L Project, I get to kind of do that same thing, right? I love bringing women together. I love bringing the community together. And because I'm multicultural, you know, I want my events to be multicultural, right? So um, so the L Project has been hosting multicultural events for, for women and non-binary people. That's awesome. And now, now on to the main event, the Women's Freedom Festival. I am so excited about this event right here because in 2019, I, we put together the, the, it was just a dope event. It was dope from the start to the beginning. We had the Earth Lodge uh, family there. They did an opening ceremony. That's Queen Hollins and Ayutundi and Yardina. And they did an opening ceremony and that kind of segue into um, welcoming our trans uh, women into the fold because you know we are firm believers that trans women are women. Um, and then we, you know, highlighted all the performers we had that day. And so we're kind of going to take that show and redo that show because we didn't have a big turnout, even though there were like 300 tickets uh, reserved. But we want to just kind of redo that show so you guys can see some of the performers. And um, we've tapped... Uh, Annie McKnight and Jeannie McNulty as our MCs. They're both actors and comedians. Uh, yes. Annie McKnight is a really good friend of mine. Uh, actually, she's the reason I met my wife, as a matter of fact, because she was hey. doing a gig for it, right? She Shout was doing out. a gig in uh, Palm Springs during Women's Weekend, and she invited me to go. And I and I knew I was going to meet the woman I was going to marry if I went to Palm Springs that weekend, Ooh. so I went. Um, DJ Alexius, she goes by uh, Lex Sutra on IG right now. We have DJ Asha. Um, we have guest speakers and the mayor pro tem, Lauren Meister is going to be there. Uh, Councilwoman Seppi Shine, uh, Mayor Horvath also, she's um, been invited. The fashion segment, you guys got to tune in for this because mm -hmm. that segment is going to be produced by the one and only Nick Casey. What? That's Yo, right. This is news to me. Yeah, That's Chris right. has been holding on to this That's since. That's right. I told you. Since before we were doing a little prep, little. Right. I what? Can't, I told you. I got to give you a little taste. A little I taste. love me some Nick Casey. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So Nick is bringing the fashion. And, uh, and we're going to feature brands by Alani Taylor, Dapper Boy, Nick Casey Footwear, yeah. and, and Sharp Suiting. So Shit. it's going to be off the chain. It's going to be off the chain. 
I feel like that's like my life in a bubble right there. Just a dapper boy. I, I, first of all, I, if y'all have been listening, y'all know my journey with dapper boy a, a journey. As far as I walked in the equality fashion week for them. Nice. Um, then, you know, but a- after that, like I wear dapper boy jeans. Those are the only jeans that touch my ass cheeks <laughs> are dapper boy jeans and wow. sharp suiting. They did my my suit. They did my outfitting for my wedding. Um, wow. I had a couple of I like it was so good. I had to go twice. It was so nice. I had to go twice. So, you know, I had to get another, you know, I got I had another uh like special collar uh situation made and right. I I love sharp suiting. I'm hoping to have Leon on with uh with Tony. Tony worked on my um on my measurements through COVID. So mm. shout out to all of them and shout of course, out to Nick all Casey. The, the, and of course, I love them. Nick Casey. Nick Casey's been on the show. Uh uh Vicky has been on the show of uh of Dapper Boy Clothing. Nice, nice. So hopefully we'll have Leon and, and Tony on soon. But right. that's that's psh- I'm feeling like a giddy fucking. <laughs> right, you guys better get those tickets, man. Uh, That's all listen. I know. Because you know, we're also, we're also going to have performances by one of my favorite bands, Christina LaRocca and her band. She does, um, you know, like rock. She's a rocker. Hallie Johnson. Nice. We got boy band. They're performing. Mm. And okay. Mila Miranda and more to say. Hey. Right. Now, look, I want someone you guys, say more to say more to say. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And, and, and more to say, I can't wait to see them perform, but I haven't had the opportunity to see them perform live. So I'm looking forward to that. But um, we're also going to have Mila Miranda, who is uh, an emerging uh, artist from Peru. And she she just moved to Minnesota. But uh, you guys, when you see her, is she's she's a smoker. She's going to be I'm telling you. She's going to be on the next American Idol or nice. one of those because she's, she's Well, you had her on Angry. You had her yeah. on your show, didn't you? Yeah, she's a producer, singer, songwriter, a dancer. She danced for Disney. I was like, girl, you need to be. Yeah, uh, we're hoping nice. she gets she gets a, she gets a promoted the way she needs to be. Um, our That's media so sponsors, dope. though, we have media sponsors to LGBT Hollywood. Um, there's a, a, a podcaster by the name of uh, between uh, gay and uh, gay and Bruno. She does a show called Between the Sheets. Hey, yeah. Between the Sheets. Between the Sheets. So yeah, <laughs> we're we're getting it together. We're looking for more sponsors. So if there's any uh, women-owned LGBT owned businesses out there, hit me up. You can hit us up you at info. I uh, know. I'm sorry. You can hit us up at the dot <laughs> l project la at gmail dot com. Nice. Uh, just go ahead and repeat it one more time for folks that are time. listening. You watching? You, you like? Guys, hold on. Let me open right. my notes that's app right. on my phone real quick. Hold on. Hold on. That's right. First, you give one to second. IG, go to Instagram and follow us on Instagram at L Project LA. Then go to Facebook and like us L Project LA. And then, if you want more information, you want to sponsor. Women's Freedom Festival, then definitely hit me up at the.lprojectla at gmail.com. There you have it. She had, she's and made sure to speak it to the mic. That's right. You made right. sure to speak it to the right. mic if you hear right. me. And that's right. If you hear me, you better get your asses over there. Buy a fucking ticket. Yes, buy a motherfucking t- ticket. Kid. That's right, because it's about to be on and popping. I love that. I'm so geeked. Um, damn. Wow. You heard it. You heard it. I didn't even know because y'all haven't been haven't promoted who has signed on. Y'all got mystery. You know, I only know more to say that was on the flyer that I saw because uh, and y'all haven't even posted that on Instagram. No, no, no. That, so we're because I was on the website. Right. Well, that's on the website because it's just a draft and our gra- our graphic designer. Uh, I want to give her a shout out. Alex Banks. Hey. Black Kitty. I think she does Black Kitty graphics. But um, yeah, she's going to be pumping out our graphics for us. So as soon as she gets our promo for the performers, we're going to send that out to you. 
Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm geeked. I, I'm excited wow. too. I'm excited. I'm like, because... let me come down from this high right now because yeah. I just naturally am excited by more to say dapper boy clothing, Nick Casey, boy, band. sharp suiting. Oh That's right. Right. All these other people I don't even know, but I kind of know, but don't know, but I kind of know. Right. I'm excited by all of it. This is this is gonna be really an 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 amazing event. This is theoretically the second annual. Se- second annual. The only yeah. reason I give a question mark with a pause <laughs> is because the first one was not last year, but the year before right. in Long Beach. Right. Um we took but, a year you know, off. We had to reorganize. Right. Well, and COVID happened. And so COVID that just out. yeah. That 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 happened to work. Like I feel like COVID, as much as it really sucked, mm-hmm. it really had people sitting and reflecting and absolutely. saying, "How can I do this better?" Right. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. I think I think that was that that was one of the most powerful things to ever happen in, you know, obviously we, we, we suffered great losses, um, Mm. you know, during the pandemic. Um, but the folks that were able to see a next day, I think it really put a lot of folks in a, like their mind into a different perspective. Mm. You actually had to sit at home with yourself, assess some shit and figure some shit out for you. What was that journey like? What was that moment like for you? Well, I'm the the very beginning of the pandemic was kind of tough because for me, a mental adjustment, it was tough because I'm somebody that, you know, I'm up at 4 30 in the morning, I'm heading out to clients at, you know, my first clients at 5 30 or 6 30. And when everything comes to a screeching halt, it's like, oh shit, hold up, wait a minute. So for the first few months, I was like, I was in like a little funk. And I later realized I read somewhere an article that, um, you know, the woman described it as a collective grief, you know, because you're, you're kind of feeling as I get older, I feel more, uh, I feel more of the energy around me. So I was feeling that it was heavy. Yeah. You know, and it took me a minute to really, you know, get into like, what, how am I going to, sh- I had no money coming in. That shit was like, what yeah. the fuck? You go from making yeah. so so much money a, a month to like, oh shit. And we're not doing nothing right now. Hold on a second. So yeah. I had to shift gears. It took me a second to get a grip because one, I don't like being in front of a camera. I don't like being on my phone unless I'm playing a video game. Mm-hmm. I don't like talking on the phone. So um, it took me a second to set up this virtual training because I'm used to kicking your ass in person and like is it the same thing well it turns out for most people I can kick your ass over the phone and it's the same shit so I've kind of for some clients uh we we've kind of picked it back up and people are back on my roster I'm back working almost full time um but for some other clients they fell off because they don't want to uh do virtual and their space is not big enough where I could train you outside. So if you don't have a space, I could train you outside. I'm not doing that. Um, so yeah, yeah, like I said, it was tough in the beginning, but now I've kind of got my footing and I'm staying my black ass home. I don't care <laughs> what they say. This shit is over because people are stupid. Mm-hmm. I hate to say that humans are just dumb. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to wear masks. And so I go out and I see most people are walking around without a mask. The gym where I used to work at down the street, I drove back there. The place was packed. Not one person in there had on a mask. Oh and my I was gosh. like, oh, hell no. And I worked in a gym for, for off and on for 30 years. They are the most disgusting places. You stay sick. I stayed sick mm-hmm. as a trainer because you're picking up germs all over the place. Yeah. You don't even realize it. So now I'm happy because I can stay home and I'm a little bit of a germ phobe. I'm not going to have mm-hmm. to touch your ass. <laughs> so yeah. I can do my sessions over the phone and we're good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My, 
my hands are like tired of fucking hand sanitizer. Like they dry, they just, but at the same time I could, I'm, I feel weird not putting hand sanitizer on my hands. <laughs> but it's good that you're doing it because yeah, it's a habit now. Like, like you see, um, in some of the Asian countries you go, they just wear a mask all the time. Like that's yeah. just part of their culture. And, and I believe as a society and as evolution, I mean, we've got climate change coming. There are things being released into the air that haven't been released into the air for thousands of years because ice yeah. is melting. So we are, as a human species, the preservation of our species is, uh, it's, it's fucking grim. And yeah. if you ask me, we are in that sixth extinction. People yeah. just don't realize it. There will be a downfall of governments. This is why I'm into Bitcoin. There is, this is why I'm into survival shit because black people don't know how to survive. And I'm trying yeah. to teach people how to survive. How are you going to survive if everything shut down? You saw what happened when we went into the pandemic. People hoarded toilet paper and water and just stuff they didn't really need. You right. thought the world was coming you to an end right. when you did not see any toilet paper on right. their shelves, no paper towels, like right, right. What so the fuck? Like, right. So you need to learn how to make sure you have water enough water. You have to make sure that you've got um, things that you can survive on in the event that the economy crashes, right? Mm -hmm. Say the economy goes into a, a hyperinflation and everything melts down like in 2008, but worse, like when the pandemic happens, shit comes to a screech and halt. Yeah. That is bound to happen during our lifetime and we are not ready. When I gave yeah. that speech at, at the Dyke March and I'll forget what year that was a few years ago, Part of that speech was about us not being ready as a society and lesbians in our community. I know we're not ready. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I almost feel like it's a, um, like a catch 22 as far as like lesbians being prepared. Like <laughs> we prepared, but we not prepared. Like we got a whole bunch of shit, but we not prepared. You don't have the right shit. You need the right shit. Yeah, that's the that's the idea. What are, some, what are some of the top things that come to mind that folks need to to get to do? You need like, a little box that has like just basic stuff. If you are, um, you know, like your basics, things that you can grab in, in a in a matter of a moment, like a little case that has all your ID, uh, some spending cash, because if the electricity goes out, you can't use your credit cards. Sure can Right, you can, you won't be able to do anything. And if there's no internet, even I'm a I'm a crypto user. You may not be able to send crypto to anybody. So you're gonna have to have whatever weak ass cur fiat currency. You're gonna have to have a stash of that or something that you can barter with, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what happens when societies break down. We move into a barter state. People can barter food. That's what's gonna be the number one thing. And most people don't have enough food in their cabinets to last them for six months. You got enough food they in your sure. house, to, house to last you six months? Uh, no, we definitely don't. Uh, we have water, though. We got water and canned goods. And, like, so, I, I low-key try to make sure that we, like, somewhat okay when, like, you know, the uh, what was that movie with the rock? Was it earthquake? Like, <laughs> shit really hits the fan. Right. <laughs> like, you know, I try to right. think about that, but I'm also probably gonna go eat my neighbors and go eat their food because, right. like, you know, I, I have these neighbors on this side and ain't nobody like ever see them. I don't know if they lock themselves in a basement all year long and then just order, like, they get their groceries delivered and their food and Amazon packages. I see them maybe leave every blue moon. And even the lady across the street was like, I've been here for two years and I only just now saw the lady that lives, that's our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like I wanted to tell her, I only see her when there's really a power outage. And that's only like by happenstance. Right. Right. that I see her, but I know they have to have some top notch shit. So I'm running through their house. If they hopefully don't have any weapons. Um, and I'm taking their food. I, that's my plan. Like my plan B or C. 
Right. But we do have water and canned goods and stuff to like maybe last us like a month or two, if that. Right. But yeah. but and no, but that's real talk though. Like you should be prepared for the long term. And I think that this pandemic has brought on a lot of it's open your eyes of what you need to have and what is really mm -hmm. a waste of space, essentially, you know? Absolutely. Um, I, I think that uh, when you're talking in terms of, of surviving, uh, you know, like a, a major event, like those tornadoes that just happened in Alabama, those folks are not ready. They're not no. ready for the next 20, 30 tornadoes that are going to hit them over this Neck over the summer. Mm -hmm. So, as a society, I think that, you know, we have to look at preparation because we can't just think that every day you get up, it's going to be okay. Yeah. The shit's happening right now that people are not paying attention to at all. At all. And mm -hmm. Wall Street right now, they're tinkering away like they're just fat and happy. And that shit's going to come crashing down. And when that shit comes crashing down, the whole entire globe is going to come crashing down. And if the dollar crashes, it's really over. Yeah. You know, what are people going to do? They don't know yeah. what they're going to do. They're going to be screaming. No. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's wild out here. It's right. the, but in the, the meantime, meme. we going to party like it's 1999 up in this motherfucker. Hey, Exactly. <laughs> Well, speaking of parties and celebrations, right. we are approaching your four-year anniversary. What have you learned about yourself that you didn't know before? My four-year anniversary? I believe it's four years. It was 2017 you got married? Oh. I'm out here doing deep dives. Damn. Okay, so May. Yeah. wait, we've May. been married I, four years. but we How am I telling seven. you how long you've been married? <laughs> Uh, don't laugh, Negro, because in a couple of years it's gonna be you. I, Dory gonna be no. At trust me. Ass. After the first year, <laughs> I, after the first year, I know that's gonna happen. I'll be like, wait, right. really? It's right. just been two years. Right. It well, feels because, longer. Right, because we've been together <laughs> for like twelve. So it's like yeah. It's a, it, it took eight years for us to get married. Once Trump came in office, we were like, oh, yeah, we need to get married right now. Let's do this. <laughs> that was one long-ass engagement. I was like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To get it together. <laughs> but um, what have I learned in four years with my wife? Mm -hmm. Like about yourself. Like, well, about what, myself. What, I, what, what have you learned about yourself that you didn't know before? Like, I feel like marriage and, and now joining the marriage club. Yes. It really has you like digging deeper into yourself in who you are, who you thought you were. And then you're like, well, who the fuck is this new well, person being all new well, as shit? You know, as, as a matter, I think because of my nature, I, I, my, my adoptive parents, they were together for like 30 years. So I had a, and they never argued in front of, us kids, right? So I had a really good um, role. I had role models that I knew I was going to, I wanted to get married, but it was about finding that right person. And when I met Shelby, I knew like after I met her, I was like, oh yeah, this is the one right here. Yeah. And so what I've learned is um, now that my wife has had, she's has having medical, some, some, uh, medical issues, life-threatening medical issues, <clears throat> you know, I realized that my whole entire life, like all the fuck-ups, all the turns, all the twists, all this and all that got me to this point right here so I can be here for her, right? Yeah. Because this is, is deep. It's like she's going through chemo and, you know, it's like, your cancer is a is a fuck cancer. It's a bitch. Yeah, and, I'm sorry um, to hear about that. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's just like everybody I know is going through some stuff. But I'm just fortunate that I've got the background and I've got the um, 
you know, that I, this, there's a love that I just never knew existed. That's one of the things I can say I, as, a, as somebody that's adopted, as somebody that has traveled this whole world, you know, you're bouncing from here to here. And um, that, that love can grow deeper. And I just never knew that until I got married, until I, you know, I've been with this woman for eight years. And when we got married, I, we were on a love high. Like we, I had just met her. Like wow. that shit lasted for like a month. Just the whole entire scene. It was, it was just incredible. I have never experienced anything like that. And That's so, beautiful. yeah, it is beautiful. And so I learned that, um, that this love can be sustained forever. It can grow deeper. Um, and that it kind of just puts things in perspective for me, right? So she, nothing comes before her and whatever it is, I, however many times or I got to jump up and down these stairs, we gonna do that. Yeah. And so th to me, that's, that's been the, the most significant um, realization for me is that this, you have this um, unlimited capacity to love and be compassionate and I don't care how many times I want to choke her ass out. Mm -hmm. You know, I look into her eyes and it's over. It's like she melts my heart. So, yeah, yeah, I ain't going nowhere. I love that. I love that because it's like I feel like and I don't know why that is, but it's almost like, yeah, we hear about black love and, you know, married lesbian couples, but we don't hear about. <clears throat> you got me all choked up. You, I, you don't hear about that inner, deeper work that goes into mm. it and what you really internalize in that process from your journey to where you are now in your marriage. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, if you're frustrated with the person and then you're like, damn, all you got to do is smile at me. And I'm just like, damn, right. you got me, girl. Right, you got right, me. Right. You ain't going nowhere, girl. You going right. to you gonna have to kick my ass out for real out here, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, exactly. to, to get me out of here. But no, I, I think that's that's definitely something that I think folks need to hear more of that mm -hmm. that positive lesbian marriage love um, that that I, I feel like you really don't hear about it too much in the mainstream, you know, it's just, um, so that was, that was really dope. Like that was, well, I'm you like, know, damn, I think I just, the lesbians community has dwindled down. Some women don't even want to be called lesbians anymore. Yeah. Right. So I'm all about lesbian vis visibility, lesbian love and, um, yeah, whatever I can do to, to keep us in the mix, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, I definitely want to be a part of that. So, yeah, I feel that. Okay. So uh, since we're on the topic, what does the L and L project stand for? The lesbian. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, you know, for but folks it also that are... stands for love. Okay. And licky licky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all the lesbian love, licky, licky. Love, licky, you licky. Gotta, love, you you love, gotta love, think licky. of like all the L words. Um, right. Licky, licky, love. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm like, that, that's uh, all we need uh, right there. Yeah, love, yeah, right. Lesbians yeah. and licky, licky. <laughs> exactly. The three essentials <laughs> lesbian, <laughs> yeah. licky, licky, and love. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I fucking love that. Um, you know, for folks that are out there, being a married woman in the game, approaching four years, what advice can you give to single folks out there that are actually ready to settle down? And then what advice would you give to the married folks out there that are married and looking for some wisdom, some guidance? Well, for the young folks that are searching, because it is a search and it is about, um, you know, the vibrations, someone's frequencies and red flags, right? Um, it, it, I don't want, I think a lot of times when I see these young kids, they're, you know, like 
kind of like us. We were just have a relationship. You don't understand the emotions that go into it or you're not emotionally ready for a relationship. I was just say, continue to explore, um, explore your sexuality, explore the depth of your love, work on personal development, work on self-love, spend some time alone. The best lesson before you get into a relationship is just spending time with you. Because if you can become intimate with the essence of who you are, you're gonna be a better partner for the person you come into, who you meet down the line that you may want to become, who you guys may wanna marry or like try, and let's just try this relationship on for a few and see how it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you're just meant to be friends. All right, so one of my friends in Hawaii, we were, I think we were lovers for like three months. We weren't meant to be lovers. <laughs> we're better off friends. Yeah. So sometimes that's how it is. And for married couples, it's always a constant, uh, constant, you have to constantly work at communication. I've become a better communicator because of my wife, because she's very clear about what she wants and how she wants it uh, in terms of, you know, me talking to her about things. Cause I'm, I'm very, um, you know, I'm very quiet for the most part. I, I don't, I'm not offering. Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it or not. I'm very Believe quiet. It or not, I'm, ve I'm very <laughs> quiet. I'm very like to myself. I can, I spend a lot of time alone. I don't, I don't have any problem being by myself. I can spend hours and days and days and days by myself. I don't have any problem with that. Um, but I think the, um, you know, when you are in a relationship, communication is key, really. Communication and not holding on to petty shit. Like I don't hold on to no petty shit. I don't fucking get on my wife about nothing because that's her shit, right? I'm, I'm not asking her to put, take, put the, you know, the top on the toothpaste. That's not, I'm not, you know, petty <laughs> like that bullshit. Cause I've had girlfriends like that and she's had girlfriends yeah. like that too, right? Yeah. Like don't come at me with no fucking bullshit cause I don't want to hear it. If we're going to have an argument about something, it better be fucking something serious. Don't come mm. at with me no bullshit. So uh, for couples, I think they already know. It really is about <laughs> communication and honesty. You know, even if it hurts the person, I'm honest to a point where it will hurt your feelings. But at least you get where I'm coming from. Yeah. Right? So my, my wife and I have had arguments because sometimes she don't like the way I talk. I have, I'm, I'm ex-military, I'm abrasive. I don't have that touchy feely lingo. You know, I can't give her that emotional comfort that she needs sometimes because I'm too like, what the fuck? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? Just get out of that shit. Right. We're now. a fucking I'm competitor. Like, Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and yeah. She needs, oh, babe, you know that. And I'm so not like that. Right. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. honey, unless I'm trying to get her to smell my armpits. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> right? but for married couples, have fun. You guys need to laugh. My wife and I dance together. We laugh together. We get up in the middle of the night, still to this day, at two or three o'clock in the morning, we wake up at the same time we are talking and laughing. And it's just, you know, she's, She's my friend, my lover, I'm her protector, I'm everything, you know, just like I'm I'm here for her. And that's that's how I like it. I love that. You heard it. You heard it. And, and, and uh, wow. I, that was beautiful. That again, another beautiful gem right there. Thank you. Before we get out of here, I figure yeah. let's mix it up a little bit. Okay. Um Instead of what the meme, because I will be a drunken mess in the next five, 10 minutes, uh, that we should play maybe a game of privacy. Okay. So there's um, questions uh, one through oh, four. Yeah. And so if you pick a number, I will uh, read the question to you. And if you choose to answer, you answer and I'll drink. Now, if you decide, ah, it's a little too racy. Um, and you want to ask for your attorney, which is essentially the equivalent of pleading the fifth, <laughs> then, <laughs> then you have to take a drink. All right. I'm now, 
folks, I have tried to get better at asking, are there, is there anything? Oh, do you need to go get a refill? Cause it sounds no, like no, we're about no, to we be got drinking. <laughs> we got a shot here. We good. So, you know, I, I've tried to be better about asking, like, is anything off limits? I try to be very mindful of that from day one. But every once in a while, shit happens. Conversations go left. I like to know what my right. boundaries are. It's better to know what the boundaries are and be like, you know, you tell me what it is. And I'll, I'll try to my best to stay within it. But with privacy, you really I, I've said this before time and time again with privacy. You never know. Uh, what you're gonna get? So okay, I'm down. Uh, Let's go. It could be any question. It could be. Listen, we had some a question about anal sex. Uh, a few episodes of what? Like it, it's it could really be anything. It could be that flicking a I'm booger. Down. Let's go. I'm an open book. Let's. Go. Okay, so Chris says she's an open book. Here we go. Here's a little bit of privacy. So pick a number one through four. Three. All right. Number three. Have you been on a blind date? See, this is what I feel like privacy does. It starts you a little slow. Right. In the, oh, that's not so bad. And then shit really goes like okay. real sideways. The answer is yes. I've been on a blind date. And how was it? Like, is was there it like it was crazy? The woman can uh so this was, was it in Spain? Lived, what happened? No, this was in when I lived in Oakland. And this was literally when the internet first came out back, you know, when the dating sites came out. Yeah. And I met this attorney woman online. And, you know, the pictures back then weren't the best. <laughs> and was so it on I, AIM chat? I can't remember what. But anyway, <laughs> I, met, I met her at Jack London Square at one of the restaurants. I think it was, uh, I can't remember the name of the restaurant now, but um, <laughs> we're sitting at the bar. And as we're talking... Like I'm trying to look her in the eye, right? Kind of because you try to see if you get this connection, even though she wasn't my type. I try to give her, <laughs> give her, <laughs> give her my full attention. But when I went to look at her, she just kept batting her eyes like nonstop, like. <laughs> and then she'd go. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, uh, bartender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that date went absolutely nowhere. Then a second blind date I went on, a girl showed up and she was like scratching herself. She was like, just just every time I asked her, she was like scratching. I was like, what the fuck oh is my wrong with gosh. her? That was when I went to San Jose. That shit was crazy. Oh, San Jose? Yeah. Say less, fam. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pick number one. All right. Let's see. Could you be in an open marriage? Ooh. Uh, where's Midori? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> mm, right this girl. <laughs> Thankfully, she's at brunch, a very long extended brunch as we approach the six o'clock hour. <laughs> right. Could I be in an open marriage? Um, like if it was okay with everybody? Yeah. Um, if it was okay with everybody, I think that it would... Open is so committal. I would say I would, but as like a... This is the the like coupon that I use for like when we go out of town... And like shit happens if that happens, but I don't, but an open marriage as far as like dating locally, that feels like trouble. That, oh, that would never happen. That's I'm, I'm all about the sister wife. Oh, I'm all yeah. About the so Shelby and I have no problem with the sister wife. Hey. Anybody wants to uh, come here and interview, you just hit me up. On my private yeah. lines. Okay. So y'all do have... I, wait a minute. Uh, no, we don't have an open relationship. We play. <laughs> We've never had an open relationship, but we play like we would because we talk about interviewing sister wives all the time. Yeah. See, we have a couple so, sister wives, but with just no sex. There's no yeah. sex involved. 
Right. Like you have that like magical moment, like right. at night with another couple or another person. And then it like stays Listen, in that night. My my wife, I've gone out to the club. I come back. My wife is like, like booed up with somebody back in the day when we first started dating. And people like, Chris, you bet. I'm like, oh no, we could bring her home. <laughs> right. Like, I, I don't have no problem with that. My wife be flashing her boobs and stuff like oh, she's got beautiful boobs. If they want she wants to flash them, let her. I don't yeah. care because she going I, home with me. Yeah. You know, I don't I, care. I, yeah. No, I think that um, I think I would be probably a little bit more open as far as like playing, but not like to see you like continuously right, right, right. I feel like I know my track record and <laughs> even when I say like we just playing we just hanging out even right. in my single life I, how do I hook up with you in Vegas for a so- during a I'm gonna say it during a softball tournament super extra gay and then we come back to LA and you like still trying to hang out like that oh, it doesn't yeah. No, no, right. No. We were supposed to leave it in Vegas for that one night. And that was it. This was my single life in my hoish days. Right. But yeah, like I don't. So I think there had like for me, there's like stipulations as far as like how open open really is, because leave it to my Sagittarius nature to be like, well, you said open. And then it's like. Then I got you like do you have to define open because open for do. one person is not open for the other person. It is not, it is a jar open. <laughs> it isn't a jar. <laughs> so you gotta define that shit. What does yeah. that mean? Yeah. No, like I mean, we've definitely been with like been around other folks and be like, I feel like we understood. Like, I mean, if shit like kept going, we might, you know, but it didn't, it ended up not necessarily going down that route, but I feel like, yeah, right. the night was open. Right. Just like, just like the marriage could have possibly been open that night. It's right. like a hit it or miss one night only exclusive. But I think we definitely have agreed on if we go out of town out to another country <laughs> and just go ham we ain't got to take that souvenir back. You know what I'm saying? So right. well, but, I, I'm not dipping my toe in that water <laughs> without the wife there. That's all I know. Uh, it, it has to be, uh, yeah, the wife, <laughs> you've met the wife. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that, that's, that's, uh, yeah. the wife yeah. has to, uh, completely co-sign right. every document because it's right. going to be more than one document. Happy <laughs> life. Happy life. I'm a firm. Always. Uh, I'm going to pick number three. Do you know exactly how many sex partners you have had? Oh, wow. So I feel like they should put like <laughs> male or female. Chris, we're, 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 we're really getting to know one well, another know at this point. Partners I have. <laughs> That's easy. Chris was female not partners. <laughs> That's a whole different story. Right. And there's technicalities. There's, um, no, well, if you're talking about just people you slept with, come on now. I mean, we're, I lived through uh, the eighties. There's no, there's, it's gotta be over a hundred. Be Y'all were turning up in the 80s. Well, I'm turning women out. You know, that was the thing. Like, oh, who are we going to get? How married? was it? I don't want to switch topics, but like, how was Because you've seen WeHo evolve as it is. Mm. Um, What was it during those times of the partying and the cocaine and the... Is WeHo the one place that just has not let go of the 80s or what well, is... Well, no, they have. I mean, first of all, I can say I haven't I haven't gone hung out in gay boy bars in a really long time. But if you want the beat of what's happening in the gay community, you're going to go hang out in the gay boy bar. Mm-hmm. And other than the Abbey, I haven't really hung out in too many gay boy bars. Yeah. But back in the day when I did, it was cocaine, speed, um, and just your basic weed, right? Some folks yeah. are doing hash or whatever. A lot of folks are doing the locker room. 
like a lot mm. of guys like and the gay boys some of the gay boys still do that locker room stuff. oh yeah on the dance floor you know that i forget the nitrous oxide or some stuff they like sniff, mm. that, sniffing that and it gets you high but i'm i'm cool on that i don't want to be that fucked up like yeah. i like to smoke a little weed and have a little drink i need i don't need to be out of my mind anymore <laughs> I would like to recall my evening. As right. that's, I want, I want to recall my evening. But back in the day, yeah, in the eighties, like when the Palms was happening, they had they had what more women's clubs, all that shit was shut down. But you know, back in the day, it was off the chain. You could just yeah. fucking bar hop all up and down Santa Monica Boulevard. You could just bar hop all night long. Was the girl bar kind of the last dedicated? lesbian woman no, focused the, space palms i think was the last the palms? that just they just shut down a few years ago mm. um, and then so the girl bar i don't think the girl bar ever had dedicated space other than them mm. renting out something next to the abbey or across from the abbey or wherever they were throwing their parties but the palms was actually a women's bar that you could mm. actually go in and there were women there bartending the women the owners were women I think or maybe we're, uh, I'm not sure who the owners were but um, that was the last spot and that place was bulldozed a few years ago damn you know I like I feel like they you know they do these like nights you know you've got your fantasy Fridays you've got what is it the chapel like on occasion it'll be which is like uh, the Abbey extended project <laughs> to you know, they've got their woman focused nights, but it, it's still not, it's not going to be a fantasy Friday. Right. Well, the thing is, you got to understand women don't really socialize and patronize bars the way men do. One, we don't have that discretionary income, right? Mm. So, and we're nesters. You know, we can go out a couple of nights a week. Men like to go out just because they are into that scene, right? They can go do their thing and you know what I'm talking about. But women, <laughs> hey. <laughs> right. You know, they're just a little bit more promiscuous than women are. And so for women, we don't go out for those reasons. We go out to socialize, to connect with community. And this is one of the reasons why we wanted to create the L Project outside of the bar scene. Because, I, I mean, yeah, I love going to the bar, but you can't really, you know, communi- uh, have like, fellowship with a bunch of people unless you're in that party space and there are people who don't want to party all the time they just want to get together and you know maybe enjoy some art enjoy some music fashion like we're gonna get at women's freedom festival yes so we wanted to do stuff outside of the bar scene and this the the events that i've been doing my almost my whole entire life has been about that you know like the erotic show that we did in at black box theater in oakland That was all about bringing community together so we could express our sexuality. You know, when I came down the stairs and I saw all them naked women running around with dildos, nothing on the dildos. I was like, (laughs) oh, this is my kind of party. (laughs) I was like, oh, we need to do another one of these. (laughs) That place was packed. Nice. Outs. And we dildos everywhere. Dildos and <laughs> butt naked ass women everywhere. I was like, yeah, this is my kind of party. I love it. I love it. And to answer the question, I don't know. And, and so <laughs> I don't I I I I talk about my hoe days with guys, and then I had like the tail end of them hoe days with women. I really don't know, and I can't really count. So I'll just say, I don't know. 20, 10, 15? I don't know. Oh. Like somewhere. We might as well not even talk about that. Chris, <laughs> Chris is like, I don't believe that shit Dude, one bit. Yeah. I don't I, I don't believe that shit one bit. I believe that you live in LA and it's been more. <laughs> it's gotta be more. I mean, well, yeah. I don't know. How old are you? 37. Oh, you still a baby. I I oh, was doing so a lot of fucking when the, when I lost that V card I was doing a lot of <laughs> a lot of frivolous fucking just for right, the fuck. Well, look when MySpace came out, I was a straight up MySpace whore. Okay, I Black was like, Planet was my jam. Damn, no, I, I caught I caught a lot of dick on Black Planet <laughs> on AIM 
on Yahoo Messenger. Oh, God. That is I crazy. was out here. Like, you couldn't tell me shit. So, like, wait a so, minute. so, wait a minute. You were straight for how many years? I need to be interviewing you. I need you. To I know. Hey, hey, so, so, right, so, shit. so, please tell me how long were you straight? You know, I, that's a really great question. Um, I was doing some really gay shit in my younger years, but I always passed it off as oh, I'm just in a threesome or a half threesome, wow. you know. Um, so I didn't fully come out until like my late, not my late, uh, like early 20s, we'll say wow. early, early mid 20s when I officially came out. But I was like out here testing the pool water in different places and you know it but it started in high school like I had a crush on my high school teacher I've talked about this before but I just I had a little magical crush on her and I I tried to spit game at her and like when I look (laughs) back at it I'm like damn I really tried I tried it so I was like a baby gay and didn't even know right. I was so fucking right. gay that it just felt natural. Right. Exactly. But I was like, yo, I love I love your energy. You know, I was just like, you know, like I had a good time with her. Like That's cool. if I had enough courage, I probably would have tried to kiss her in a Spain nightclub. Like, you know, you go to the nightclub, you know, Spain and Barcelona. Right. So, you know, they've got the open club. You just walk in and walk out. Like, you don't have to be hassled by really anybody. And I went and it was just so fucking magical. I went with that teacher and I was like, damn, like, I really had a crush on her. And I I think I even sent her an email saying, like, I would love to, like, you know, like, let's go <laughs> hang out or, like, let's spend time, like, I, I really tried to spit game at my oh at a Spanish teacher God. that wasn't even my Spanish. I was taking French and right. I was trying to I was trying to like spit game at her. And, you know, I think thankfully she never responded back to me. Um, but I was just like, damn, like I was so heartbroken. I was like, damn, like she she won't write me back. Right, right. So there was like a basketball mentor that I had taken on and I I thought she was cute and you know she was hella gay like now that I think about it and you know she but I met her through a basketball camp and I was like oh like I really enjoyed that she would like come to my games and support me and I was like oh like I really appreciate (laughs) you coming to my games like you know and I was like yo this is fucking amazing I loved hanging around her I loved hanging out with her but I should have known I loved like me some basketball WNBA girls like long before but uh yeah and and so that that's a little bit of my journey uh I guess in a nutshell the baby gay days but yeah I finally came out to yeah my mom there you go yeah yeah and queer super gay and super super queer on that note before we get out of here we usually end on words of wisdom What would be your words of wisdom that you leave the people with? You've dropped a lot of gems, a lot of relationship gems that are out there, you know, for people that are like, yo, I need love, you know, trying to settle down. You know, I know you don't believe in the uh, colonial uh, holidays, the, the Valentine's Day and all that stuff. But for folks that are just looking for some words of wisdom, what would you tell them um, as they look for some encouragement and some inspiration well uh, there's a quote by Stephen Covey I love called it's uh it says it's about it says um ask with intent listen without excuse and act with courage Um, I kind of live by those words uh because you know it is all about intention and I'm trying to become a better listener right um a better listener I think uh, people need to really work on listening skills and trying to just, you know, not be so quick to offer anything and just listen. And then acting with courage is, um, you know, it, it takes a lot sometimes when you see injustice or you need to speak your truth. Uh, it is an act of courage and resistance is an act of courage. And 
um, speaking your truth is an act of courage. So I, I kind of implore everyone to, to speak and act uh, with courage as much as possible because it's an empowering, um, it's an empowering feeling to know that, you know, even though you were scared, you stood up and said what you had to say. Yeah. And so I, I think a lot of times people, uh, they're too afraid to speak out because their voice trembles, like whatever that other quote is. But I don't care if your voice trembles. You get out whatever it is you need to say. I love that. I love that. I think my words of wisdom will be a little bit, I, I basically kind of what I just basically kind of, finish having a rant on you really had me hyped up like like hyped up today um trust your spirit trust mm-hmm. your trust your internal and personal spirit trust your trust that gut feeling um don't ever feel pressured to do something that you don't want to do but be open to the experience of going outside of your comfort zone i think that going outside of your comfort zone is where you learn the deepest, um, whether it be a a, a learned moment um, or an enhanced moment, you're still having a moment. And I think that that's important to have as we progress and try to elevate one another um, in this, in this space, in this, in this life. Absolutely. Uh, But so again, before we get out of here, how can the people reach you? Well, I am uh, on Twitter at Angry Afro Radio. Hey. Because I talk a lot of shit on Twitter. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Instagram, I'm, I'm Fight Goddess there because I post up a lot of my training videos up there. I'm at Fight, uh, LA Law Fight Goddess on Instagram. And on Facebook, um, I don't really, I'm not really on Facebook as much anymore because I've been censored and. They've, they've kind of tried to shut me down a couple of times. I've been in Facebook jail. I'm like, fuck Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so don't even bother looking for me on Facebook. You want to talk to me, you can hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. <laughs> or Clubhouse. Or, or Clubhouse. Clubhouse. I'm at Baldwin Rocks on Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yes, yes, or Clubhouse. And again, y'all, make sure you support, whether you can make it or not, support L Project Presents Women's Freedom Festival, a virtual pride event. Um, It's the Women's Freedom Festival, y'all. It is time. It is. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's going down June 19th, 2021. Um, And again, the pride celebration is featuring art, music, poetry, fashion, guest speakers and more. We got the exclusive on who is going to be there. I'm super pumped. I'm super excited. Um, Early bird tickets are available until May 19th. um, And then general admission tickets are from May 20th to June 18th. Um, And then, of course, there will be day of event tickets. Y'all support. Obviously, they want you there. I want you there. I want you to be there with me. Let's enjoy this moment. Let's enjoy the virtual. How many times can you really say you can go to a virtual pride? Let's just be real. Like right. after this, we are gonna be celebrating in person. So have That's the right. experience. I can't wait to celebrate in person. But in the meantime, this is mm-hmm. gonna be a global event. Women from all over the world are gonna tune in to see our very own SoCal lineup. With Mila Miranda, uh, Boy Band, Haley, Hallie Johnson, Christina LaRocca, more to say, and uh, fashion by Nick Casey and some brand fashion brand manager, uh, brand makers, I should say. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, you guys got to tune in. Tickets are only $15 right now. You guys check out L Project, the L Project. Yes. Dot org, the L Project dot org. Yes. And of course, all of the information will be in the show notes and the episodes blog or the blogs episode. No, episodes blog. Every episode has a blog. Make sure you check it out. Jam Pack. Yes, the Jam Pack blog. Jam Pack blog. It's under Jam and News. And then if you go to Jam in Thought, and that's T H O T, because I'm still. 
uh, a little, I had a thought in me at one point. <laughs> so I have to acknowledge that, give homage to the yeah. thoughty McThoddersons yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, so it's always Jam and Thought and then the name of the episode. So make sure you check it out for all the finer details. It is all on the Jam Packed website and that's jampackshow.com. Reach out, hit us up at Jam Pack Show on Twitter, Instagram. I'm on Clubhouse, y'all, at Jamila. We just going to keep it simple. I'm the OG Jamila. I just want to put that out there. Shots fired. Right There's on. another Jamila with the same exact spelling. Much love because she's from Detroit and I've heard her speak and she ain't about the shit. But at Jamila, if you want to come find me on Clubhouse, let's be friends. I will follow you in whatever room you in. Let's ping right each on. other. Let's, let's do, do this. Do um, y'all, this has been amazing. Make sure, this again, awesome. that you watch this uh, on YouTube, youtube.com slash jam-packed. All right, on. This is... <sighs> this was awesome. Thank you very much for having this, me. This was such a, an amazing time. Um, we've got new episodes every Wednesday dropping every Wednesday morning. I'm not even fucking with the afternoon time. Wednesday morning. You will get a new episode every Wednesday morning, y'all. So make sure you subscribe. Hit subscribe. Fucking hit like. Subscribe. Fucking follow. All fucking of that follow. good shit. All, all, all of those, all of those everywhere. That's right. That's right. Britt gonna kill me in post if she actually decided to do that. <laughs> but make sure you check us out every Wednesday. This has been a complete pleasure and an honor, Chris. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining My us pleasure. and all My of pleasure. the shenanigans. I'm glad I was able to get you to chuckle at least one good time out here. <laughs> Y'all, and we will see you on the next Peace K Jam. Hey, hey, hi Tequila, hi Jamila, I can see ya in my sunglasses, nice to meet ya, I'm on Jam Pack, that shit is mad stack, I'm trying to see if I can come and get right back.